the entrance antiphon, the just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar, planted in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Good morning. Good morning. Today's Mass is being offered for the parishioners of St. Francis Xavier Parish. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to all my and to you, my brothers, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary to pray all the angels of the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for the people of the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who brought the abbot of St. Anthony to serve you by a wondrous way of life in the desert, grant through his intercession that denying ourselves, we may always love you above all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the first book of Samuel. David spoke to Saul, let your majesty not lose courage. I am at your service to go and fight this Philistine. But Saul answered Davis, you cannot go up against this Philistine and fight with him, for you are only a youth, while he has been a warrior from his youth. David continued, the Lord who delivered me from the claws of the lion and the bear will also keep me safe from the clutches of this Philistine. Saul answered David, Go, the Lord will be with you. Then staff in hand, David selected five smooth stones from the wadi and placed them in the pocket of his shepherd's bag. With his sling also ready to hand, he approached the Philistine. With his shield bearer marching before him, the Philistine also advanced closer and closer to David. When he had sized David up and seen he was youthful and ruddy and handsome in appearance, the Philistine held David in contempt. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come after me with a staff? Then the Philistine cursed David by his gods and said to him, come here to me and I will leave your flesh for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David answered him, You come against me with sword and spear and uh, scimitar, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel that you have insulted. Today the Lord shall deliver you into my hand. I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will leave your corpse and the corpses of the Philistine army for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Thus the whole land shall learn that Israel has a God. All this multitude too shall learn that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he shall deliver you into our hands. The Philistine then moved to meet David in close quarters, while David ran quickly toward the battle line in the direction of the Philistine. David put his hand into the bag and took out a stone hurled it with a sling, and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone embedded itself in his brow, and he fell prostrate on the ground. Then David overcame the Philistine with sling and stone. He struck the Philistine mortally and did it without a sword. 
Then David ran over and took and stood over him with the Philistine's own sword, which he drew from its sheath. He dispatched him and cut off his head. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for battle, my fingers for war. My refuge and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues my people under me. O oh God, I will sing a new song to you. With a ten-string lyre, I will chant your praise. You who gave victory to the kings and delivered David, your servant, from the evil sword. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, it is, lawful, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent. Looking around at them, with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart, Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Rhodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we remember St. Anthony of Egypt, or St. Anthony of the Desert, who was also an eventual abbot of a small um, monastic desert community. People flocked to him when they saw his um, life of poverty and life given fully to God. But it wasn't always the case. When he was about 18 to 20 years old, his parents died, and he was left with caring for a very young sister. About six months after his parents died, he was on his way to church, when he began to think about the apostles, how they left everything to follow Jesus, he began to think about those people in the Acts of the Apostles who brought their possessions to the apostles to sell and give the money to the poor. And he, his, his heart began to be moved about the hope of heaven for these people and for himself. And when he walked into church, the gospel was being proclaimed, and he heard Jesus' words to the rich man, saying, If you would go to heaven, sell everything and follow me. And Anthony began to think that God was moving him, put his thoughts of the saints uh, to give up everything, and moving him himself to do the same. So he did. He sold all the 200 acres that he had inherited, very beautiful, fertile land, sold all of his possessions, gave it to the poor, with a very small exception. He kept a little to care for his sister. Then again, he was going to Mass, and he walked in, and he, he heard the gospel, um, saying, our Lord saying, do not be anxious about tomorrow. He felt convicted from then to not hold on to anything. He sold everything and moved into the, into the desert. He entrusted the care of his sister to some um, religious nuns in a monastery, and he lived in the desert a very hard life of work, uh, fasting, and penance. And others noticed this and, like I said, joined him. His life shows us to let go of everything. Uh, to be poor, if not materially, interiorly, so that we can let go and grab on only to God. But I think his life also shows us how to hear God's voice in our lives. 
St. Anthony was very familiar with scripture. He was attentive to the word of God, and he was frequenting church, frequenting mass. By receiving the Eucharist, by listening to the word of God, by paying attention to the way that God is working in our hearts and our lives, his movements, we know what he's calling us to do. And it may not to be sell everything and move out to the desert. I hope most of us it won't be, but he speaks to us uh, consistently and lovingly and invites us ever deeper into poverty of heart, poorness of spirit, to rely on, on him even more. He invites us ever deeper into his love. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to lead them in wisdom and truth as they shepherd God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who govern and legislate, may the Lord bless them with generous and charitable hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, may the Holy Spirit uphold and strengthen them in their darkest hours. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our world and for the safety of the men and women of our armed forces and the first responders who serve our community, let us pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord God, in confidence we bring you these petitions and all the prayers that words cannot express. But we know that you hear and answer them according to your loving plan. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Bless to you, Lord God, of all creation. Goodness we have received the bread we owe. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Most beautiful God of all creation. Your goodness, we have received the wine of life. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings of our service, placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Anthony, be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that, released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, 
We too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, Lord God, heaven and earth are full of you. Hosanna, blessed is you, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the thought of all things. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the new form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called on the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand out of my room, but only say the word.
Let us pray. Nourished for our healing by your sacraments, O Lord, may we escape every snare of the enemy unharmed, just as your just as by your grace St. Anthony won glorious victories over the powers of darkness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses and St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in God. We are protection against the wickedness of the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we love thee, pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell the sea, and all the evil spirits, who go about the world to seek the Lord's soul. Thank you.